so hi friends uh, welcome to my first arduino tutorial the reason i'm doing a tutorial on arduino is because it's one of the most trending topics when it comes to electronics and you can do almost all of your electronics projects in college or in high school using your arduino so let's get started before getting started this is how your arduino uno looks like by the way let's clear some misconceptions and myths revolving around the arduino first one is that it's not a microprocessor a b it's not a microcontroller as well what it is is simply a printed circuit board that contains a microcontroller on top of it so this rectangular box that you see is the microcontroller the name of the microcontroller that it uses is atmega 328 so before that what's a microcontroller a microcontroller is simply an electronic circuit that is capable of executing instructions given to it all right so these instructions are given to it using programming you write a code there's a compiler which converts the code into zeros and ones and that zeros and ones is given to your microcontroller to microcontroller to execute that cool so this tiny little black box is the brains of your entire arduino all right so what you do is you connect this your arduino to a laptop using this UART jack so you connect that using a usb cable connect your laptop write a code in the arduino software i'll show you how to download the arduino software and use it in a moment download the software write the code upload onto it and based on whatever code you written your arduino is going to execute that so let me just give you a brief sketch of what the arduino structure is so you have i'll just bring it closer i don't know so this how your arduino uno looks like There are thirteen digital input output pins at the top. There are six analog input pins, and there are some power pins. So to clear the confusion around so as to why we need different types of pins, let me just say that any electronic signal in the world can be classified as either a digital signal or an analog signal. A digital signal is that signal which is in the form of zeros and ones, and an analog signal is in the form. of continuous values for example 278.9 236.6 184.2 and so forth so if you are connecting a device like an led that takes digital values because your led turns on if you give it a high signal it turns off if you give it a low signal so that you will connect in one of these digital pins however if you want to connect an analog input for example a potentiometer so basically if you read a potentiometer it gives you a resistance value that is mapped between 0 and 1023 so that is not zeros or ones so that you'll connect in one of these analog inputs next you have some power pins to provide power supply for different external sensors and devices that you're going to be using other than that we have a voltage regulator that allows your arduino to take up a power supply of 5 to 12 volts If you use a power supply of more than 12 volts, there are chances of your Arduino's IC is blasting. It's recommended that if you use a power supply higher than 5 volts, you plug that in the V in terminal of your Arduino. We also have a crystal oscillator over here that serves as the clock of your Arduino. If you don't know what a clock is, we need a clock in the any microcontroller or microprocessor to synchronize different components of the processor. and if you don't understand why we need synchronization let me give you a small example say in an office every employee has a different clock of its own for example if there is a certain employee whose clock shows that it's 8 am in the morning and there's a different employee whose clock shows that it's 2 pm in the afternoon and similarly everyone's clock is showing different times so there's going to be chaos in the office because everyone will be working at their own time and pace so we need a common clock for everyone that shows the same time so everyone can work in sync with each other so that's why we need a clock and the clock frequency is 16 megahertz for your arduino uno we also have an internal memory in your arduino which is of 32 kilobytes so that is all you need to know about the arduino architecture to do any project so now we'll move on to the coding part so this is how your arduino ide sketch looks like i've given a link to install the arduino software in the description So your yeah, every Arduino code is divided into two sections. One is the void setup, and one is the void loop. So 
in white setup you write that part of the code which needs to be done only once that needs to be set up only once for example if i'm writing a code to blink an led i need to declare the fact that the led is an output to my arduino so that i need to declare only once so that i'll write in my void setup in the loop i'll write the code to turn the led on and off so that it happens again and again infinitely to get a blinking led so this is how the basic structure is now coding in arduino becomes very simple because you have pre written codes for you you can just go to file click on examples and in basics we have the code to blink an led if you understand the code well you can easily write codes by yourself so in the blinking led program we have an inbuilt led in our arduino at pin number 13 what we want to do is we want to declare that as an output and then send high and low signals to it alternatively to blink the led so in void setup we write the line pin mode 13 comma output which basically declares pin number 13 as an output to our arduino after that in the loop section we write digital write to send a digital value and we write pin number 13 comma high which sends a high signal to pin number 13 after that we want to wait for a second before turning it off so we write the line delay comma 1000 this is not 1000 seconds this is 1000 milliseconds because arduino measures time in milliseconds so basically we are giving a second delay before going on to the next line so after that we turn the 13 pin off using digital write 13 comma loop and then we give a delay of 1 second again before the loop gets executed again so there is a program for blinking led to make it more readable what we can do is we can declare a variable call led and name is and store the value 13 in it so now everywhere instead of 13 i can replace the variable led so this makes the code more readable and now say i want to change the led pin to pin number 10 i can just change one line and i'm good to go so that is the benefit of declaring variables name at the top so after writing the code connect your arduino to your laptop using an arduino cable after that go to tools make sure that the correct port to which your arduino is connected is selected and after that make sure that the board selected is arduino uno and then click the upload button so the code gets compiled meaning that it's checking for errors and it's converting that into zeros and ones and then it gets uploaded so it says done uploading so the output should look something like this so you can see that the arduino's led turns on and off with a interval of 1 second so that was it for today's tutorial if you have any doubts or you want to see any other tutorials please leave that in the comments i'll bring up more tutorials so stay tuned and yeah thanks for watching